Eight months ago in September of 2020, we purchased this 2007 Toyota Highlander. You guys know that we do not shy away from purchasing high mileage but reliable vehicles. Uh, but you might be wondering how is a 14 year old car that's sitting at, at about 227,000 miles doing? We're gonna answer that question for you. Now we have already done a full rundown of this particular Highlander. If you wanna find that video, it's gonna be right here. But just to recap, under the hood, we do have a 3.3 liter V6 engine, a five speed automatic transmission. But this video will mainly be dealing with what has gone wrong, what we've had to repair, the maintenance we've had to do on this car. All right, we will now discuss all of the things that we have replaced. The first thing that we had to do when we first got the vehicle was get a new battery. Obviously, that's not really like something that goes wrong in a vehicle. Every every vehicle needs to get a battery every couple of years, pretty much. Um, but I think maybe one of the things that was causing the battery to have an issue was the fact that the alternator was bad. We didn't know that when we first bought it because it, it ran just fine, but after I think we we drove it around for, what was it, only like a week or so, the um, battery light on the dash came on and after checking it with a, a voltmeter, I was pretty confident it was the alternator. Sure enough, it did unfortunately leave me stranded on the side of the road, only like a quarter of a mile from home, so that wasn't a big deal. but. This is the first Toyota that has left me stranded before, technically. Anyway, an alternator from Denso was a pretty cheap and easy replacement. That took me maybe only about a 45 minute uh, period of time to change out, so not a big deal. Uh, and, you know, throughout 220,000 miles or whatever, an alternator going bad is, is pretty understandable. Uh, a couple months after that, we did have also a misfire that started happening. And that was because of this cylinder right here, or actually specifically underneath this uh, coil, the, there was a misfire on, on this cylinder, and that was because of the coil. Uh, thankfully, it was one of the coils that's really easy to access right here. One of the issues, or not really an issue, but one of the design constraints with this engine, with it being turned sideways, is the fact that the other plugs and coils sit underneath this manifold. So getting to those coils and plugs is a little bit more challenging, but thankfully these up here are really easy to access. And that coil from Denso, once again, which is the OEM provider of parts for Toyotas, um, well, most Toyota parts, uh, that was not very expensive either. And that was a very easy fix. Now those were most of the major things that we have had to do to repair the Highlander. And thankfully even those were not devastating things that kept us off the road for weeks and weeks. Uh, one thing we do still have to tend to on the dashboard, we've got a light on for a P0420 code. That's either an O2 sensor or a catalytic converter. We'll have to get that fixed before we take it in for emissions this year, but it's not keeping us from driving around. If you know anything about buying used cars, you know how important it is to find out where the car has lived. This particular Highlander has been in Arizona since it was built in 2007 until it moved up to Utah just a few years ago. Um, that's really great because that means that the underside is so clean. It does mean that it's got some pretty bad sunburn on the paint. Um, we'll show you, there's some pretty bad fading, some peeling, uh, but that is purely cosmetic. That is obviously not affecting how the car runs and everything that counts is doing just great. Now this car did sit for about a year before we bought it, um, which is why the battery was dead, why several repairs had to be made. Um, but as soon as we got it up in working condition, we drove this thing across the country. We drove from Utah all the way out to back to the Southeast where our families lived and did just great. Did not leave us with any concerns the entire trip there or back. Now, because it did sit for a year, there were a few things that we noticed when we were first driving it around that were a little bit concerning, but ended up working themselves out. One of those was the brake. There was definitely some old fluid, maybe some air in the brake line. It was a little soft, but after what, a week or two of driving that around, uh, it worked itself out just fine. We did not have to end up going in there and draining the fluid or anything like that. Another thing was the transmission. When we first started driving it around, we noticed it was a little bit slow to shift, sometimes a little bit jerky, and that was a cause for concern. Transmission's really not what you want giving you trouble, but after Dylan changed the fluid a few times, 
worked just fine and it still is now. We have no concerns with that. All right, it is now time for the very much famous Dylan Frazier test of a vehicle's build quality. And that is to drive on a dirt road that's bumpy and turn off the air conditioning so that you can listen to it and listen for squeaks and rattles and all sorts of other weirdness. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. And it is quite bumpy right now. Maybe you can tell we won't really stabilize this footage, but uh, as you can tell, if you listen closely, there are no squeaks or rattles. It's just like our Sequoia when we, when we did the test, the same test with it. Uh, any sort of weird noises might be just from the keys jingling around, all of the, you know, suspension components on the vehicle, all of the plastic interior bits doesn't, you know, make weird creaking noises. It's all really tightly knit together, just like you want a vehicle to be, uh, even when it does have 227,000 miles on it. Now, with that, one thing I'll point out about this vehicle that really isn't a critique of its reliability or build quality, but just something I feel like this, this car should have is some sort of external thermometer. Like our Sequoia up here has a, like a little, you know, digital display that will show the outside temperature, uh, you know, an approximate fuel economy. We don't have anything like that on the Highlander and it really feels like a huge oversight. Uh, also, we don't have a sliding back door or back window on the Highlander like the Sequoia has. That also is an oversight. To summarize, our experience with the 2007 Toyota Highlander has been overwhelmingly positive. Yes, we have had to make some repairs on it. Yes, it has a few quirks, but it's a 14 year old car and it has over 200,000 miles on it. That is perfectly fine. It's to be expected. And honestly, if we had to jump in this car right now and drive across the country again, I wouldn't worry a bit. This car has been an awesome daily driver. Um, up here in our valley, we get a ton of snow and it performs just great in that. And as you've seen, it's been really fun to take on some adventures. If that's the kind of thing that you're looking for, I could not recommend this vehicle more.